part four of who is Big Poe. I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit because I'm trying to finalize this thing. I'm hoping y'all enjoying it, man. Like I said, you're getting the real, the real right here. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. Share the, the IG page. Definitely um, subscribe to the YouTube channel because that's where we always keeping the show going. We dropping bombs and freestyles, just constant work coming at you. You know what I mean? And we discussing everything that is rap related there. You know what I mean? So go ahead and become a rap relative. You know what I mean? Um, all right, let's move on. So the single incident that buzzed me the hardest when the competition at the gallery, the source unsigned hype competition at the gallery in front of thousands and just now Big Poe, Southwest Philly, this guy from Big Poe is the next thing. The buzz went, whew, all through the city. It vibrated. Everywhere, all through the city. I mean, people were talking about it everywhere. And um, people was pulling up, yo, I heard you did this, I heard you did that. Yo, Big Poe, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm like, Philly, it was like, you felt like the hometown hero. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like, Philly had just was in that drought period since like the T EST them era, it was like a 10 year gap where nothing was really happening on the Philly side. You know what I mean? So, um, long story short, I just never forget uh, my last performance that night, the last flow that I did, I had switched it up to like a Southern flow, did like a Southern bounce style. Now pop the move. Where the who? Who got the keys to the double O's? I'm about to get them a taste of pole. If the bitch want to do it, she might as well go. Chief, come on, baby, please. You're not even in that league. Your boyfriend got a PhD, so please give it up quick to me. On the download, like R. Kelly, like that tattoo on your belly. Something, 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 something. Dry, I got petroleum jelly. Lace my mama out with ice. What make you think I can't do that twice? If you're a bad chick and you're worth it, if you work hard, you deserve it. Put your feet on solid surface. I know ain't nobody perfect. Do what you do, I do what I do. I'm going to do the same when I'm inside of you. One leg up from the top. One leg up. One leg cock from the back on top. Six nine seven five. you begging me to stop. Something like that. It was some crazy stuff. It was old school back then, you know what I mean? But wasn't no East Coast. Wasn't just nobody doing that. I came with a South style. You know what I mean? And the crowd, mind you, when I did that, it bounced like that. The whole crowd, it was like, yo, I did all these other flows through the whole joint, blazing them. You wait for the final round, and then you just switched everything and just came as a whole different person, a whole different flow. Like, pop the moves, wear those. Who got the keys to the double O? It was just like, they was like, what the heck? The whole place erupted. Like I said, Fat Joe and them flip, nearly flipping over tables, jumping out of their seats, black though, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, Place is erupting. I'll never forget when I'm while while the place is going crazy looking up, seeing my man Bob. He beside Littles. Littles must have got off work now. Littles was like peeking from the side of the stage. Littles is now up in the crowd, in the stand. I just see all these people packed, everybody erupting. And I see Bob, you know what I mean? See those two familiar faces, Bob up there, like, <laughs> and you know, and um my man Littles like, yeah, they jumping up and down going crazy. I'm like, oh, this thing is insane. They this that thing was insane, you know. Had to give a shout out to my man Bob Baba and Littles, you know what I mean? That support was felt. Um, so mind you, the buzz is everywhere in Southwest Philly now, so and that was done independently on my own, you know what I'm saying? From my buzz on the street to my homie calling me and just that just was that was God's doing, going down there, ripping it, and now here you are <clears throat> on the way to the finals in New York. With a chance to rap in front of more people and all, you know, get in the Unsigned Hype magazine. But basically, your career is going the way, the direction you wanted to go in. You know what I mean? Now, that comp, that finals wasn't going to be until like February of the next year. Mind you, this was like October or November when I ripped this. So you had to go through the holiday season and then get to, I think, January or February. You know what I mean? So during that holiday season, when Steve sees me again, Stevie G who wasn't my manager, but he would always bump across me because I was always battling his boys wherever we would see each other. Barbershops, wherever we met, it was on site. Big Poe against Most Wanted. And then it was, you know, 
as time went on, I'll get into Bop's story when I had Bop. It was Deuces Wild against Most Wanted. You know what I mean? I had my man Bop because I got tired of going against three against one. But um, it's times they shined on me. It's times that I shined on them. And we'll get into those stories. You know what I mean? But um, anyway, Stevie G sees me something. Yeah, I heard you. Did you think something? Yeah, I'm here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I did those things. Like, yeah, but um, he told me, I want you to come down to the spot on 56th Street because he had Dave Lighty of Jive Records, you know what I mean, going to be there, you know what I mean, I guess to hear, to link up with Murder Mill, Murder Mill already had a, day, a deal on the table, that's Murder Mill, that's um, Beanie Siegel's homie, and Murder Mill's a good dude too, and he was he was hot, Ike Mill and Beans, they had a South Philly hit before Siegel was on, that joint was crazy, something but the, I got a thing for Ch oh man, I can't think of the lines right now. But they all killed it on this joint. They that, they killed it on this joint. Mill and Bean, they killed it. Um, Ike Mill and Beans, I think Ike did the beat for that joint. Uh, what up, Ike? If you out there, man. Um, so he wanted me to come there because really, I think I found out hearing that the real person who really wanted me to be heard was um, not take it out away from Stevie J, but uh, he was also partnering up with uh, Dana Black at the time. Not the young Dana Black who raps in Southwest Philly, but Dana Black's father. He's the OG Dana Black. So Dana Black would be there sometimes, like when I'm battling most wanted at barbershops in different places. And um, he was like, yo, you got to let him hear Big Boy. You know what I mean? Um, and I always felt like Stevie G respected my style, respected my flow, but we're two totally different type of people. Stevie G liked them flamboyant, like, Pretty boy style boy. So Stevie G thing was tater. I guess maybe for sales, how he was looking at it. Like pretty boy, like Montana, like about the lady. It's real cocky. If you even listen to the most wanted style, like they was thugging, but it was more like they were always appealing to the girl. They had some stuff and I respect them for their lane. You know what I mean? And, um, but my lane was, I was always on the street grind. It was grimy. It was hard, but it was versatile. And I don't know if he knew he, he began to learn that. I think he knew it because he would hear it when we when I would battle them. He would hear some of those versatile styles that I would bring. You know what I mean? But me and him just were just it just was an equal respect for each other. You know? And um, but the boy Dana Black was really, really impressed. You know what I mean? It was like, yo, you gotta let big them him hear big boy, Dave Lighty. So long story short, that night comes. Everybody is at 56th Street. Blue Bonic. Mr. Man, Montana, like I said, was original Most Wanted member. Beanie Siegel. Murder Mill wasn't there that night. Bapa was there. Murder Mill was out grinding somewhere, I think, or something like that. Because Siegel was like, man, he got a hair. I never <laughs> he was like, oh, man, where Mill at? He was trying to con find a way to contact Murder Mill. Because Dave Lighty was coming down. And the deal was in the works with Murder Mill's deal. Okay? So I come there. Before the boy Dave Lighty get there, me and Bob there. And, and, and Rashid Arnold, Newt, Newt is with me this night. So this is a crazy night. Okay? Mind you, now we all in the same building. You talk about a lot of testosterone, personality, uh, Arrogance. It's like you putting, you can't put a bunch of dogs in the same room. You know what I mean? But it was all love, but it was like you just fill it in the room. We was playing around a little bit before Dave Lighty got there. Like little Cypher was going around and everybody was rapping. But of course, Beans was cooking it at this time. And we, this is a different story. We're going to get to that. He was really heating it that night. Then, uh, or he heated it a couple times. Like when he touched it, he going to heat it. He heated it. Uh, most of the was in there heating it. We heated it. Everybody was heating it. And, um, but I remember. So we waiting on the board, Dave Lighty. We took a little break. I think I went to go get like a fruit punch from the Chinese store or get something to eat real quick. So we walked down the street on 56th Street to uh, Greenway. There's a Chinese store down there. And I remember, um, cause at that time I kicked a couple joints that me and Bob had. We was doing a couple joints together. And um, I remember Newt being like, yeah, yeah, when the boy, he's like, yo, Rashid Arnold was like, yeah, y'all was all having fun, man. But I feel like 
they ain't respecting you, man. I don't feel like they respecting you, po. Or they ain't, y'all gonna, you gonna have to make them niggas respect you. Like something, like he's saying that, I'm like, hmm. I'm like, you know what, maybe you're right. Cause you know, certain people was, you know, doing anything. And maybe I said, wait, well, maybe he's looking around, you know, maybe he's like, he's seeing certain looks like, mm, you know, like they half interested or whatever, like not really respecting a brother. I'm like, and they already, you know, I'm like, hmm. So I'm taking this and I'm like, oh yeah, well, you know, I said, like, yeah, Nams, I'm waiting for the ball. You know what I mean? Then we're going to heat it up. You know what I'm saying? But I was just, you know, it was some warming up, some sparring, you know, light sparring. He like, yeah, I just want you to like, dog, they need to know. It's big power, man. They need to know when you do your thing, we all do it. So, all right, we eat, fruit punch. The boy gets there. We come back up the street. I'm like, all right, now Newton got me hype. <laughs> Bad enough, I'm already hype. You talking about my dream coming to fruition. Okay, yeah, the source stuff is is something that's already in, in, in motion. But now you talking about Stevie G is known in Philly as managing people and getting people deals. At this time, Siegel had the Rockefeller deal in the works and most wanted he always had them in front of somebody so at this time i think they had the deal in the works with atlantic i know they was in front of wyclef and them but i think they had they was now working with the neptunes and had something in front of them there so i'm hearing about all this you know on the street hustling you always i'm hearing these things i'm like yo all right i'm like damn stevie g want to bang with me cool you want to manage me i'm like you know what i mean we always was thorough but it's like okay cool but anyway we go back the boy dave lighty gets there i would already heard knew he already got me hype oh they ain't respecting me they ain't respecting me huh? okay so Dave Lighty did a couple of people, people spit, and then Steve wanted them to hear us. Like, yeah, this is so. Me and Bob was spitting, spit, and now Dave Lighty he's there sitting there. This is how the New York boys do. They come, and he'll look just like this, straight face, and he's like this. And me and Bob up there giving. He's emotionless. Couple flows go by. He's trying to keep the motions. I said. But you know how LeBron passes the ball during the game, but it's at a certain time where you say, you know what, hand me the rock. I'm about to show this ball something. It was like that Mamba mentality, you know what I mean? Rest in peace to Mamba, the black Mamba. I said, Bob, it was clutch. All right, we kicked a couple of jokes, so he wanted to play that way. I said, all right. I always say, well, Bob, Big Poe was cool, but Solo Big Poe was a fool. So Deuces Wild was an amazing group because me and Bob yin and yang each other. Um, we mesh in a unique way and it brings a beautiful sound. But I said, hold on, this I'm about to, I got to blaze this guy. I need to let him know, you know what I'm saying? Let's just see. If he ain't throwing us together, let me see. We'll, we'll do solos. So I went, I said, you know what? Let me go into my bag of tricks. I start heating him up. I pull out one of my, one of my serious, serious headbangers, original joint I, I created by the name of Chicka Chicka. And you ask anybody about, yo, what's up with Big Poe? They probably gonna say, yo, he had this joint called Chicka Chicka. So this is like a story where I'm talking about these girls and um, it's like a funny, entertaining, but hardcore and everything. Before I know it, man, this guy was just like, yo, him, Stevie G. I'm like, yo, this just had the reaction out of everybody. Being sick with them, rolling around on the floor, jumping up, grabbing each other. Yo, going crazy off the story. The John, I won't give you the hook, but... In the song, it just was like in one part, I think verse two, I'm talking about, oh man, it's, it's, um, the song is so great, I can't wait to bring it to you. I don't even want to like really give nobody no real touches of it. But I go into on the second verse, I remember saying, the other day I met a dove. It's funny when I tell my friends, they only believe in tens, but this chick had a twin. Their names were Antoinette and Isabel. And if she played a trick on me, I bet I could. And if she played a trick on me, I bet I couldn't tell. But I'm down for it. Seagum's Jen and Ginger Ale. They was like, yo, it was like, and that was the second verse. I have already heated them with the first verse. The place was going, wow. And when I would tell this hook the way I would tell it, I'd look at different people as I said, you know, go, you know. You're going to hear the song one day. You're going to understand why I don't want to really leak it out. Because this song is like, um, big. Real big. It's, one of, it's real big. Now, anytime it's 20 years later, 23 years later, I don't even want you to hear that joint until it's the right time and it's produced, everything is right. It's because it's, it's humongous. The song is humongous. And um, everybody was just blown away. And that was the day that was like, okay, I know everybody respected me, but it's time for y'all to give me the utmost respect. I had met Siegel previously. I'll get to that story. But this was the day that I got the emotion I wanted out of everybody at the same time. All the MCs, all of Philly, we all here. You know what I mean? Put some respect on my name. You know what I mean? And, and you know what I'm saying? And it was just crazy. And um, Bop got his respect that night because, especially from the MCs, because they um, 
I remember Montana, like, whoo, and Stevie J, he liked Bob, because they, they would like when you talk that saucy stuff, like about chicks or whatever. So, but this song, Chicka Chicka, was huge, because I guess it jumped in, a, it got so much reaction out of Steve, I guess, because it jumped into his world, talking about chicks. But in a way that the storytelling, when you hear it, you're going to be like, oh my gosh. And people that's out there, y'all vouch for it. Y'all put a comment down if y'all, you know what I mean? Y'all want to tell them a little something about the joint. But it's just a fun song. And this was way back then. It's fun story just along that, those lines. But um, anyway, that night, um, everybody had to give me my respect. Long story short, the boy Dave Lighty, I was in New York Monday at Job's office. The boy Dave Lighty, he wanted me to come up to um, New York. That Monday, man, that Monday, I was in the navigate, me, Stevie G, uh, Murder Mill, Beanie Siegel, and Ike. And um, we headed out to New York. I go up there, I'm trying to just summarize things. I go up there, blaze the job office, and then uh, Dave Lighty takes me over to meet Chris Lighty, rest in peace, over at Def Jam Violator. And that was amazing because when we get to the hit factory, we get there and um we go in the room and we um kicking it with Chris Lighty right before I blaze it for Chris Lighty. Um Carmega, who knew me from the source ward down down in Philly at the gallery, Carmega, he from QB. Uh he happened to be in the factory, he peeked in to say something to Chris and they be like, yo, yo, big power, what you doing here? So people looking like, yo. How they already know you up here? You know what I'm saying? People just look. You can see that look like Stevie G. People looking like, like Big Pony coming. Like, what you doing up here, man? Showing up like, oh, man, chilling, man. You know, trying to work, whatever, whatever. So it was like, that was like, dang. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And that was off the work I did on my own. You know what I mean? But uh, long story short, I killed it for um, Dave Lighty at Jive, and they wanted me at Jive. That's, so that was already established before we left Jive. We got plans for him. Dave Wrighty had Buster Rhyme visuals of me because I guess my animation and dude, he we got plans for him on the South Flow, his like to the Southern. His style was different. You know what I mean? They could just literally see like, yo, this dude is from Philly, but he don't rap like a Philly cat. Which everybody's had their own originality, but I got that Philly hunger. So Chris Wrighty heard me. He like, well, what's up with him? Dave Lighty's like, nah, I already took him to the office. With, you know what I mean? We got, we going to keep him. You know what I mean? Because Chris Lighty was like, what's up? What's up with him? You know what I mean? This was back when my song, when Chris Lighty was dealing with my song and Buster Rhyme over at Violator. And Chris Lighty was a real thorough dude. Dave Lighty was thorough, took me to see his brother, who was real thorough at, uh, you know, with Steve and them, Dev Jam, with Siegel. And it was just like, Philly was moving. We were moving. You know what I'm saying? And, um... That's just how those deals got on the table. Then that night we left Def Jam Violator. We went out they, with Dave Lighty to Justin's. This was when Puff had just opened up that restaurant. So I'm like, wow, man, we went our way to Justin's. I'm like, man, it's like a dream, man. You're like, what? I'm rolling out. We are rolling out on our way to Justin's now. Now it's fun time. You know what I mean? Party time. So celebrate the day and everything. So we go to Justin's. We stop at Dave Lighty Crave. We had a spot in Jersey. Stopped there before we went. Then he he in the Benz or something. He, so we following him now all through New York City. You know, we go to Justin's, see the boy. I'll kill you. The boy be with Black Rob. Uh, I think Black Rob also up in Justin's. I see Heavy D. It was just crazy. I'm like, yo, I think Chris Weber was in there. If I'm not forgetting, Weber was in there chilling. See Heavy D. I'm like, this is crazy, man. So I'm in there talking to Jones and everything, the music party and boom, boom. And this is when I think the Pastor Cavazier song had just came out. Because I'll never forget, they ran out of Hennessy. And I was like, like, like what else you got? Like, like Cavazier? I'm like, I got Cavazier or something. So I started sipping Cavazier. when I first started tasting, tasting that Cavazier. So the place was rocking. We in there drinking like crazy, kicking it, seagulled. And then who stumbles in? A whole group of people, Puerto Rican boys from Source Magazine. Like, yo, Big Pow. I'm like, yo, what's going on? They're like, what's up, family? What you doing here, family? They wanted me to stay in New York. Yo, stay with your peoples. Boom, boom, boom. Big pop. They remember me from the source competition. And I'll never forget the boy told me, like, man, you ain't got to wait for the uh, finals to get a write up in the um, source magazine. He's like, man, Tyler, man, I'll write you up in that joint. But I was so humble and just confident in myself. I'm like, no, that's cool. I'm, I'm just wanting to go by the rule. I'm like, no, no, I'm going to do the competition. No, we won't see. Cause I know I was going to see them in the beginning of that next year. But I'm like, no, I'm going um, to. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the competition way over. You like, man, you ain't got work. I'll write you up, big po man. Boom, boom, boom. You in here, man? We. I was like, wow. And you know, I was young. I didn't know. Like, yo, dude, take advantage of that right there. Let him write you up. It don't mean you cheat in the contest. You can still do the contest, man. If you want to write you up in a source magazine, let him do it now. Arrange a date and all that, you know, independently. But I was just like, you know, I'm here with my man, my manager, Stevie G, you know, because that's who brought me there. You know, I'm like, my manager, Stevie G, man, Siegel, you know what I mean? We out here, you know what I mean? Murder Mill, we, we down here, blah, 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 blah. So we busted up in the party. This was a rocking party. And um, I'll never forget. The amazing, it was just an unbelievable celebration of like how crazy that day was and how that dream, my dreams came to fruition on that day. Magical day that I will always cherish. And um, um, never forget leaving that night on the way, I-95 on the way home. We all rolling in the Jeep, the truck, and I rolled the window down some air. I was twisted, that liquor, it was just like so much going on. I didn't know I had drunk that much. It was puffing bud and all that. And um, that's what um, I think Siegel was telling me about the Bull Branson and all this and all that. They had to throw in the jars. But we driving. they like, yo, why you roll the window up? I think Siegel in front of the pole. Why you roll that window? It's cold, man. I'm like, yeah, I rolled it back up. So I'm just, next thing you know, I just roll it down again. Steven, I just <laughs> stick my head out the window. Whoa! So I'm throwing up, you know what I mean? Throw up, hitting all the side of his car because the wind is blowing. They doing like 80, 90 on the highway. Wind is blowing. Throw up all up on the, all the, all on the, on the navigator on the outside. Though, but it was just hilarious. They like, yo, you crazy. I'm just like, get back. I'm like, oh. I uh, so bad. I just remember just blacking out, just waking up like at home. It was that kind of a crazy day, and um, I will never forget. Rest in peace, our soul. I never forget the next morning. The first person I seen when those deals was in motion, my girl Goldilocks, man, G Locks. Um, the next morning, and I told her the whole story. She was like, "Wow, wow, bless her soul. Rest in peace, like a sister to me." So that was just crazy. Um, did I get into? I think I did. Just in case, did I get into, um, I think I got into it about the little nudge that I think I felt from Benny Siegel when he said he met Jay, dropped on the album in a week without, um, without unsigned hype or battle with the beats and unsigned hype. I just had that buzz going on from unsigned hype. So I'm like, you know, those were the two ways of getting on back then. But I'm like, ah, was that a nudge? Did he nudge me? Did he give me a little elbow in the ribs? I'll never forget. I'm um, thinking that. And um, also, Battle of the Beats was like Power 99 had a battle show that they would do live on the air. And um, the boy B, who formerly, who next later became Cassidy, I uh, hope I ain't talking in loops, but he later became Cassidy. And um, he had uh, beat my girl G-Locks in the finals. They met in, in, the, in the finals, G-Locks, thinking of Goldie, my girl G-Locks in the finals. And um, he had beat her in the finals, but it was like, yo, she was slicing cats and he was slicing through many cats on that joint. So we ended up meeting later. I, that's that'll be a, a different quick story, but a uh, separate individual story because we only met up one time and really busted up and did a trip to New York with priority. But um, yeah, man, that's how that happened. Um, that's how linking up with Steve, you know, what I mean, happened. He take me over to New York, and I'm greatly grateful for it. And I'll never, um, you know, never uh, take for granted that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. I know he was trying to get something out of it, of course, but like, yo, hey, you took me, my talent, hey, you introduced me to the boy, took me up to New York a few times. So I'm like, hey, much respect. It just was so happened that he turned down my deal with Jive Records back then. When that seemed at that time to be the only way of getting on was through the deal. And it's like, yo, you know, I was tired of the street life, bro. I was like a little salty about that. And then I started feeling, like I said, he always respected me, but I started feeling as though I wasn't being prioritized. You know what I mean? So I said, ah. It was just rough, man. You know what I mean? I was tired of fighting cases, and I was just tired of the whole game, bro. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's getting to know Poe. From here on, we'll go on to some different things. But um, you've got to know Poe. That's part four. So now you know. And if you don't know, now you know, niggas.